Hello guys, welcome to another Scratch tutorial. Today we are going to be going over how grid snapping works and the algorithms we can use to determine where it should snap to. Okay, first let's go over what I have here. So I just have a couple of costumes that are tile based so they're perfect for this example now first what we're going to do is get the system going so we are going to go on green flag is clicked we are going to wait until not mouse down and the reason is is when we click we don't want it to stamp you'll see why and then we're going to do clear and then we are going to do forever and we are going to go to mouse pointer and we are going to do if mouse down stab and this means if the mouse is down then it's going to stab so if you see it's working perfectly now we need a way to switch between the costumes so we're going to do if sensing key space clicked looks next costume wait until not key space is pressed so if you do now if we switch we can switch with ease and start doing them but as you can see there's a problem if we play our project you see that it's not really grid based it sort of just goes wherever it wants to go and it's not snapping to a grid it's not going like this 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 it's going like all over the place so actually what we're going to do to fix that is create our grid algorithm now first thing we need to know is that our bricks are 16 by 16. You can easily tell this by going to your costume panel and looking at dimensions of it. Okay, when you think about it, every number is divisible by 16. For example, 256 divided by 16 equals 16. So that's perfect, so there's no decimals. But there's also numbers like 134 divided by 16, which equal like 8.375. Because basically our, our perfect grid system, we want it to snap to the numbers that are perfectly divisible by 16. So if you see our X position, when it's at 134, it's not necessarily on the right place. If you actually round, the number then it will go to an even divisibility for example we're going to do x position divided by 16 and we are going to round that so it gives us a full number how many blocks across so right now it's impossible for us to not get a whole number because of the round function and we are going to do times 16 so this returns it back to like 340 instead of 16 because we can't use the just regular value we want to multiply it so it's back to its original state so if we go to and put this here and duplicate it and do y position on this one and put this directly after the go to mouse pointer you can see that it is now snapping to the grid and if we draw it is perfectly based on the grid now as you can see this makes it shockingly easy to make levels for a game and that look high quality in such a short amount of time one really interesting use i found for this is oftentimes in games that are pixel based you'll have a background that is pixel and a lot of times it's just the same tile over and over again it can re be really painful to go into here and you know duplicate this then duplicate that and so on and so forth so what i found it's easier to do is just create this engine real quick and actually so as you can see i've created a uh, background that i could use so i'm going to press pause and if you right click right here you can actually save a picture of the stage and you can save it to your desktop so i'm actually going to do background save and then i'm going to drag this in on my backdrops sorry i'm going to import it into my backdrops and as you can see 
it's perfect without the hassle. Now you might want to um, go like this for these edges because that's a problem with the uh, edges, but a lot of times you can just ignore it or really quickly. Do that and it's fixed. And honestly, I still think that's way easier than trying to duplicate it. So yeah, if you look, it's completely perfect and it's completely based on grid. And obviously this could be used to make levels. Um, this could be used for an infinite number of things. And this algorithm right here is super useful and one that I have found useful to put in my backpack. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next Scratch tutorial. Peace.